Hey guys, this is Jack from FPV Academy and in this video we're going to be showing you how to set up your FPV quadcopter after you've built it using the FPV build along video. So once you're done finishing your quad, you're almost ready to go and fly it. We just need to do a few things on the actual flight controller and ESCs to make sure that everything is set up correctly. So before we start changing around some parameters, we want to first download the programs which allows us to tune everything. So there's three things that you need to download. And the first one is the beta flight configurator which we'll be using to tune your quad. The second one is the BL heli configurator which we'll be using for the ESCs. And the last one is the beta flight 3.1 firmware which we will be using to flash to the flight controller. So there are links in the description below for you to download all three of those programs and once you've done downloading those only then go on with this video. So for the first one let's download the beta flight configurator that is the link in the description below. You just click on add to chrome and then it will download and install it. Second one is the BL heli suite which is this one right over here. You just want to click on download BL heli suite and a link will pop up and start the download. The final one is the Lux V2 firmware which is on a shared Google Drive folder, you can just click on the arrow over here and that will download the Betaflight 3.1 specifically for your Lux flight controller. Once you have all of those done, let's carry on with this tuning and setup. So I saved my Betaflight 3.1 version on my desktop and so now we're going to flash that to our flight controller. So what you want to do is open up the Betaflight configurator and click on the firmware flasher option in the bottom. Then you want to make sure that all these options have been selected, no reboot sequence, full chip erase and manual board rate of 115,200. So once those are all selected, you then want to connect your flight controller to the computer. So to do that, it's very simple. You want to make sure that it is put in boot mode because we are going to be flashing our firmware to the flight controller. So it's very easy. You just hold in the boot button on the flight controller and then you plug in your micro USB cable and that will put the flight controller into DFU mode. So in the top right here, you'll see that it is now plugged in and it's on DFU and that allows us to then flash new firmware to the flight controller. So first we want to load that firmware. Mine was on the desktop, so I'll just double click on it to load it. And then we're going to click flash firmware and that's just going to be flashing it. So you'll see it goes up on the bottom here. And once we're done flashing it, we can carry on to the next step. So if it's successful, it will say that programming successful, you know that everything has been done correctly and you can then plug out your flight controller so that it reboots it and then plug it back in again. That makes sure that it's not in the booting DFU mode anymore. It will then say COM whichever number of port in the top right. And once everything is perfectly fine, we can click on connect. So we've now connected our flight controller and everything is connected to the computer. This is the beta flight configurator and this is what we will be using to set up most of the settings on our quadcopter. So the first one we're going to be starting with is let's click on on configuration. So you want to make sure that your ESC and motor protocol is on multi-shot. That is a very good protocol that we will be using. There are some newer ones available, but to be honest, multi-shot is still really, really good. And we don't really need anything more for what we are going to be doing. So once that has been clicked, we then want to scroll down and make sure that we switch off the accelerometer. The accelerometer is used to level your quad, but we are not ever going to be flying in level mode because that is like training wheels and it is very difficult to unlearn uh, bad habits that you did uh, developed when flying with your training wheels on. So deactivate the accelerometer completely and then you just don't ever have to worry about that. And then the last one we're going to do is we want to switch on air mode. So let's just make sure that we did everything that was supposed to be done. Yes, that's all correct. All of these things are fine or everything looks good to go. So we can click save and reboot and then it will kick us out and then just connect again. So the next thing we want to do is in PID tuning for the way that this quad is set up at the moment, the stock PIDs are perfectly fine. You don't need to go out and change your PIDs. And then on rates, so basically what rates are, that just determines how quickly the quad will react to your stick inputs, um, how sensitive it is for the amount of stick that you apply. So I personally fly uh, at a super rate of 0.85 and that is fairly fast um, that jumps almost twice as fast if you look at the amount of degrees per second that the quad will spin um, but for you guys you can start off with 0.7 uh, that is a good place to start you will still be able to fly perfectly fine and then one more thing we want to do is where it says tpa in the bottom here we want to put that up to 
0.15 and lower the TPA breakpoint to 1600. And once you're done with that, you can just click on save. We can then disconnect and then go into the BL Heli configurator. So mine's on the desktop and then I'm just gonna open it up here. So this is the BL Heli configurator and what this does is it allows us to tune the ESCs and just make some adjustments to it. So before we can even do anything on it, you wanna make sure that it is selected on E. If you go to select Atmel and Scilabs interface, you select E and that will allow you to connect to your ESCs. Then make sure that the port is on the COM, whichever number was assigned to it. And with that done, you can then click on connect. So it will now say that it is connected and you can then read your setup. So once you've read your setup, you'll see that everything pops out here. If this is the screen that you have, everything is good to go. And this is then the whole setup that we have. So with all of these things, before we even go ahead changing anything on here, we want to flash the latest BL Heli version. So for this video though, always just select revision 16.4 and then flash to GH30. That is what you want to do. Um, you can there click just on 16.4 and then GH City and then click on flash. So select that specific one and then do you want to flash target ESC? You can click on yes and this is going to be doing it for the next four. You have to then just do this on all four ESCs. You'll see that sometimes it says not responding. That's totally fine. It's just um, how it's doing the whole thing. But then it'll give you some more information. Just click OK. Do you want to current setting to ESC? Yes and then just keep clicking yes and then the first one will be done then the next one pops up for ESC number two and then you can just continue the whole sequence until you are done with all four of them so I'm just going to speed past this because it does take a little while And there we go. So it says that all of them have been updated and that you'll see that all of them are now on 16.4 instead of 16.2, which were the ones that it came out with. So you can just click on OK and then we can carry on and start changing some of the settings. So the starter power, you can move down to 0.15, which is number five. Um, I believe that it was on 0.5 like that. Just move it down to 0.125. And then for the beep strength, you can set that up to 60. The beacon strength, set that up to 100. And the beacon delay set that down to two minutes so basically what this does over here is this is the beeping sound that the EFC gives out so if you are going to lose your quad somewhere in the mountains and you don't have a beeper on it then if you don't give the quad any input after two minutes which is what we said over here then it's going to start beeping and this just allows you to make that beep a little bit louder so hopefully you can hear it from further away then the PPM minimum throttle is set on 1000 and the PPM max throttle is on 2000 and and eight. So once you have everything done here, you can just click on write setup and it will tell you that everything has been written and um, updated. So once you've done that, we can then go over to the ESC overview. You'll see that ESC number two and ESC number three is exactly the same as all the rest of them. However, what we now want to do is change the motor direction of ESC number two and ESC number three. So we're going to go back into this again unclick number one, unclick number four. So only number two and three is selected. And then where it says motor direction, just click on reversed. And then we can click on right setup. So it'll say that ESC number two, right, okay. And then ESC number three, it said nothing to write, ESC already updated. So that was actually an unsuccessful right. If this does happen to you, just go into overview again. You'll see only the number two ESC has been reversed. Okay, if that happens, just go back again, click on number two, unclick that so that only number three is selected. And then we just redo the whole thing. Click on number three, reversed, write the setup. Okay, there we say, there it goes now. ESC number three written okay and then we can select all of them again and then ESC overview you'll see that number two and three has been reversed so now our motor direction is perfectly fine so once that has been done we can click on motors and we can actually then calibrate our ESCs so to do that you just have to click on I understand the risks and propellers are removed so you have to click on that but before you do though remove your propellers from your quadcopter I was actually supposed to say this even before the whole video started you never ever want your propellers 
on the quadcopter when you are plugging it into your computer. So once you have removed your propellers and you've clicked this I understand the risk, you can then click on calibrate ESCs. So we click on that, calibrate from 1000 to 2000 and apply that to all four of the motors and then we'll click OK. So it says to power off your ESCs. To do that, you just unplug the battery. Remember we plugged the battery in earlier, I just unplugged mine and once it's unplugged, you can click on OK. So now it says power on the ESCs and then click OK. So the same thing again, now you just plug the battery back in. So battery is plugged back in, you can hear how it's going on in the background. It's making some loads of noises and then we're going to click OK. And now it is going to go through the whole calibrating process. You can do this in clean flight, but I have seen that calibrating it through BL Heli is a lot more accurate than using clean flight. So it's just still doing its thing, you can hear a whole bunch of beeps and then calibration done. So with all of that done, you can then move this switch on the right and you'll see that your motors are spinning up. And then what you want to do is you want to feel with your finger on your motors that all of them are spinning the correct direction. So if you have your quad pointing forward away from you with the camera pointing to where you're looking, you want the motor number one, which is bottom right, to be spinning clockwise. Motor number two, which is the top right, to be spinning counterclockwise. Motor number three, which is the bottom left, to be spinning counterclockwise. And motor number four, which is the top left, spinning clockwise. So if all of those motors are spinning the correct direction and everything is good to go, you are then complete with the BL Heli configurator. We can close that and then we can open up the Betaflight configurator again. So connect up to there to the configurator and then we can go to motors. So this is that more or less the same tab that we just had in the BL Heli configurator. But now what we're gonna do is we are going to make sure that everything on our uh, configuration tab over here where it says the motor features that the minimum throttle and maximum throttle and everything is set up correctly so to do that we're gonna go into motors click the under I understand risks uh, propellers are removed and then on your master you're gonna click on that once and then use the arrows on your keyboard and press up so you'll see that on the left over here all four of those motors are going to be going up the values every time you press up on your arrows so you're gonna keep pressing up until you can start seeing your motors are spinning so this is the value that my motors are spinning 1015 my motors are quiet and then at 1017 they start spinning and you want them to not just pulse spin you want them to spin non-stop so at 1020 my motors are spinning non-stop they're not pulsing anymore so that is pretty good value then we can switch this off just remember that 1020 is the value that my motor spin up yours might be a little bit different but just remember that value we're then going to go into configuration and where it says minimum throttle you want to set that up at least 30 uh, points above where your motor starts spinning up. So mine starts at 1020, another 30 on top of that is 1050. So that's where I'm going to be putting mine and my max throttle is at 2000. So this with that, click save and reboot. And what that just allows you to do is that when you arm your quadcopter, that you will always have your motor spinning up and that air mode will always be active. Um, a lot of times if you put it at a lower value and um, what that does is if you lower your throttle all the way down, then your motors stop spinning in the air. And then if they have to start spinning again, sometimes the signal that comes from your flight controller to your ESCs, um, the, it doesn't pick it up properly and your motor kind of um, freaks out a little bit. And so just to bypass all of that, you want your motor spinning at all times so your ESCs don't switch off and have to start up again. So. So that's why we set up the minimum throttle just a little bit. So with all of that said, everything is almost ready to go. The final piece of puzzle now for this entire quad to go and fly it is setting up your receiver. So this is the receiver tab, but because we have two different receivers available, which is for the Tyrannus radio and the Spectrum radio, um, I will do two different videos for setting up both of those receivers 
in one of the next videos. So depending on which receiver you have, which you purchased with your quadcopter, you have to then, to finish off the final setup, you have to click on one of the two videos that are showing on screen right now, and that will take you through the setting up process of binding your radio to your receiver, and then setting up your receiver, to making sure that all the values are correct, and then finally setting up the modes to be able to arm your quadcopter. So congratulations, you just set up almost everything and you're almost ready to go. Just finish off those last few ones and you can go out and fly a quadcopter. Thanks so much for watching this and we'll catch you guys in the next video.